We don't do them right. We make it work. Take our time. And then we find ourselves with our backs against the wall. Come on, Lord! That's what he's been saying. That's what he's been saying. Hallelujah. Come on, grab your Bibles for me. We're going to move from this place. Get you while your spirit is open. My God, I still feel it. Go with me to Matthew chapter 14. Woo! Hayabashi. Oh my God. Mm. Ain't he faithful? Has he failed you yet? He ain't failed you yet. He always do his part. My God. He loved us enough that he died. He didn't say that. And he had a struggle in Gethsemane. We know that. But he still made it. He still made a conscious decision to say, I'm going to go anyway. Because he said, this thing, this thing is not about me. But you don't love him enough to give him all of you. My God. Woo! I don't know where y'all at this morning. Amen. Are you in Matthew 14? Let's look at verse 22. My God. Are you there? Read it from the King James Version of the Bible. And it said, and they that had eaten were about, excuse me, I'm sorry. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him until the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Sometimes God will urge you. Sometimes he'll compel you to do certain things. And it says, and when uh, he had sent the multitude away, he went into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wave was contrary. You ever had some things blowing against you? You ever blew against God? He told you to go this way and you went that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, in verse 25, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, this is a spirit. They cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them uh, and saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come into the water. And he said one word. He said, come. And then when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the boisterous winds, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did, wherefore did thou doubt? Wherefore did it thou doubt? And that amazing? He catched me the same and didn't ask me a question. Amen. I'm praying. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you gl glory, honor. We give you praise. Father, as I stand behind this desk, oh God, I ask you to send forth the anointing. Makes preaching and teaching easy, oh God. God, give us ears to hear this morning what the Spirit has to say to the church. And God, we thank you that the word has been preached. We ask you to confirm it with the signs. Father, when we give you praise, glory, and honor. Jesus' name in the church said. Amen. Amen. Please be sitting in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. I'm going to keep it simple this morning. going to get down through here and do what we need to do. Amen. Amen. And I'm preaching a simple message this morning. Woo! God is beckoning us today. Amen. God, he, he's beckoning us. He's beckoning us. He's beckoning us. He's standing on the sea of life. And he's beckoning us. What that word beckon means? It, come, it means to make a gesture with the hand, arm, or head to encourage someone to come near or to follow. So he's like this. He's like, come on. 
Come on. When you come to the sanctuary, he's standing here saying, come on, according to Matthew 11, 28, come unto me, all this labor and heavy laden. He said, I shall give you rest. Come on, when you come in weary, I want to give you rest. When you come beaten down by the cares of this life. He's beckoning us because we go to a lot of other places besides coming to him. My God, we go to a, a lot of places. We do we do a lot of other things besides crying out to the Lord. But he's calling us today. He's calling us on an individual basis. Come to me. He gives Peter a command. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but that command, whoo, God Almighty Jesus, is still today the same command. Come. <laughs> Woo, come, come, come. And I'm going to tell you something now, whenever you decide to be different, whenever you decide to dare to be different, something is going to come against you. You'll never know what it's going to be. It could be wife, husband, children, job, anything. Let me make this clear too now. When you, when it's husband and wife, just know you're not wrestling against flesh and blood now. Okay, because the enemy trying to come in in any door he see open. So anytime we decide that something to do something different in life, there will always be opposition. And most of us, we don't like opposition. We don't like opposition. We like everything to go smooth. Yeah, because I found out that when everything going smooth in my life, and I become complacent. I don't even roll over the bed when the clock go off. I just lay there. I don't say good morning, Lord. I don't nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so it's you know, so, so most of us don't, we don't like the opposition, so we just stay the way we are and just expect things to go the way that they're supposed to go. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to learn how to make a conscious decision to do what God called us out to do. And they don't, they don't look, people say, Well, God's will is gonna be done now if you don't play a part. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to play a part. Everybody won't be saved. Ask me why, because everybody won't confess with their mouth and believe with their heart. Yeah, it's something that we're going to have to do. He done what he done on Calvary, opened the door. Now the door is open, but we got to come in. You ever seen any pictures of Christ standing at the door knocking? Have you ever seen any pictures? Check out. If you ever see a picture of Christ standing at the door knocking, look and see which side the knob is on. It's not on his side. The knob is on your side. I promise. I didn't ever. Somebody just pointed it out to me. Hey, we look at it that deep now. But in other words, he opened the way. He made it possible. But now in order for us to be a part of the kingdom, then we're going to have to take the step forward. Oh, Lord, come. He's he beckoning somebody. See, see, the thing about it, we can't come on our own. Like the Bible said, except the spirit draw a man. He can't come. Can't come. So me standing up here and talking about your junk ain't going to cause you to come because it's not true conviction. But when the Holy Ghost... The one that's assigned to convict the world of sin when he speaks. Come. I always tell you, man, you don't have to wait till the altar's open to come. The altar's always open. <laughs> and you don't see much of that. You don't see much of that in churches. You know, you wait, you know, people wait for an altar call. You ain't got to wait till you get to church to get saved. Huh? Yeah. So why am I calling on him and he's not answering? There's got to be a problem somewhere. Probably ain't going to lie to him either, right? So in this season, it's time to step out of that place of doing nothing mm, into a place of doing something. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. So we're going to have to step in and do something. God ain't going to do everything. God never called us to be spiritual couch potatoes. We just lay around. Come on, for the most part, and we don't do anything until situations arise. Yeah, you don't really pray until, until the children start call, calling and crying out, Mama, Daddy! You don't move much. You pray for them. But what about those intense prayers? What about doing spiritual warfare and having something in your spiritual account so when you need it, you can draw it out? Y'all, y'all follow me, right? Yeah. So God is beckoning us. See, he's waiting on us. He's already over on the other side. And then he's also here with us. 
How can you figure that one out? Some things, you, some things don't try to figure out. So it's time to put our faith on the line and allow God to stretch us until we break. Some of us operating in fear, but we expecting God to move for me in faith. And then faith cast out. I mean, fear cast out faith. But the Bible just says that then perfect love cast out fear. So I got to get into the one that is perfect love. The Bible said God don't have love. God is love. So when I got love now, and a little fear come on me sometimes, but but in the most part, when it's time for me to do something, there's a boldness in me. Because the Bible said great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So there's a boldness that stands up. So we're going to get this done. Because I don't have to do it by myself. Go back to what Paul said. It's not me no more. But it's him operating through me. So then sometimes we got to see that's the part of crucifying this old man and his deeds so that the new man can be empowered. Amen. See, so a lot of times we just make a, a conscious, you know, confession. But then after we make the confession, we don't do much more after that. Amen. Might read a little bit, pray a little bit and, you know, come to church a little bit and, and get no amens there. So God called us to be different. He don't want nothing mediocre. He don't want nothing average. Call us to be different, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people that will show forth this praise. Mm -hmm. He called us out of the world, mm -hmm. out of darkness and to the marvelous light. And when he sent you back in a dark place, he expects you to illuminate. But you can't illuminate if you don't come to the light. My God. Huh? Come on. God don't want us to change. He wants us to be transformed. Huh? It's a difference in change and transform. It's a start. The change is a start. But the transformation come by the word of God. Got to allow the word of God, which is God, to do the work. Huh? Come on, so many things we're trying to do in our own effort. Yeah, yeah, yes. See, the priest didn't never wear wool. Why didn't they wear wool? Because wool indicated works. And it's not by works that any man should boast. It's done by grace through faith. So it's not us. We can't buy this thing anymore. You can't buy no blessings from God. I don't care how much money you give. Keep your money. If you look, because God ain't gonna bless me with all these blessings, and my spiritual man ain't right. Somebody done told me a lie. But today he's doing what? He's beckoning me. Come. Come on, when you don't look, it's okay not to know what to do. And the thing about it, guess what God, God uses the most? He uses the best. He used virgins. Y'all messed up. They went right over your head. Why? Why virgins? Because virgins don't know how to do it. They've never done it before. So he's looking for people like virgins. Yeah, he wanna teach you how to do what you need to do. He'll he qualify them that he called. He'll qualify you. Come on. You know, people saying that the Holy Ghost will teach me all things, but he's gonna use flesh. He's going to use somebody. You got this. Last week we talked about sitting at the feet of Jesus. You got to sit at somebody's feet. Somebody can recognize your gift, but it's got to be developed. Amen. So you got to come like a virgin. You got to come, you know, not with your intellect. You got so many intelligent people in the churches. You know, you got your, you got more degrees, Bible degrees. You got more degrees than a thermometer. You still don't know nothing. You ain't got nothing but info, but no revelation. You got to have revelation. You got to have revelation. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom first. Get wisdom. But out of all that getting, understand what you're getting. Come on. Greek and Hebrew is good, but I got to get some understanding. Got to get some understanding. The Bible said, you know, uh, 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 the Bible says, in I think it's Romans 10, around 13, 14. It says, uh, you need to preach. <laughs> and how can he preach except he be, he got to be sent from God. I came from where you came from. I know where I, I ain't come from no monkey. I came from him. Come on. So we got to be sent. We, we got to see. So in order for me to equip you, I must have said it somebody's feet. I got to wait for my time. I, the Bible said make sure of your call and your election. You got to make sure of it. Know who you called to be and then get where you need to get so you can be equipped. Don't get the call today and tomorrow you got the call on. The call don't mean nothing. Got a lot of people with a with a lot of articulation, but 
God is no anointing. You speak real well. But then Paul made a confession in the book. He said, I didn't come with enticing words. So I came to, I came with the demonstration of the spirit. Yeah. And when you got the demonstration of the spirit, you can live right. Some jokers can preach to the roof off this place. You can't live nothing. It's out here, man. You can't live a thing. Yeah. And we chase them preachers. Oh, I mean, he can preach. Yeah, but can he live in the thing he preaching? Do you see it? The Bible said, don't judge a man by his suit. He said, you got to be a fruit inspector. What's coming from his life? What do you feel coming from him? What do you see him doing? You ain't got to raise the dead to be anointed. Hmm? <laughs> Come. <laughs> he called it somebody because somebody ain't doing nothing. Come to me. Woo, Lord. I mean, do you hear him calling you? And you're sitting down. Okay. So he also equips us to endure the storms of life that come our way. Regardless to the winds that blow, we just need to stay focused and keep moving. Come on. Peter's problem was is that he took his eyes off Christ. He took his eyes off of what God called him to do. God called him to, Jesus called him to come to him. He said, Lord, if it be you, he said, bid me to come. And Jesus gives him a command. Come. He gets out of the boat. You got to get out that, out that place and do nothing. Step out of that place and do something. Then you can walk. Now watch this. That walking in the water, walking on the water was walking in the spirit. It's walking in the spirit. Yeah, see, when you get out of that place of com that comfort zone and do some stuff that you ain't done that God's calling you to, then you know it's not you. You know it's him. God Almighty Jesus, come. Somebody got to come this morning. Woo. Mm -mm -mm. Listen to this. So most of our problems begin whenever we start looking around at all the stuff that comes up against us like Peter. <laughs> whenever we step out and go to another place, no matter what it is, got to make sure we stay the course. So Peter started looking around at the winds that was blowing. When you start looking around and listening at the persecutions, who do they think they are? Yeah, when you start doing something, you, you don't have no problem with people as long as you ain't doing nothing and you're hanging out with them. Yeah, it's the moment that you dare to be different and do something ain't nobody else doing. That's when opposition shows up. Come on now, I'm telling y'all, y'all better hear what the Lord's saying. He blessed me real good on this one. Because uh, I know it's time for me to come up a little bit. Not just me, but uh, I'm just keeping it personal. Mm. Watch this. Go look, look, somebody look with me at 1 Samuel 17. I got to move swiftly. Because I know y'all y'all I know y'all don't like to hang around too much. It's amazing how we hung around the liquor house after the liquor house was closed. <laughs> Thinking about you might get another drink. <laughs> Woo, I better get the first Samuel 17 hat now. <laughs> Woo, Lord. Are you at 1st Samuel 17? Y'all know that word, don't you? <laughs> okay, 1st first, first Samuel 17. Look at 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight this Philistine. Saul said to David, thou art not able to, 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 uh, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight him. For thou art only a youth. Only a youth. Now, he's a man of war from his youth. David said unto Saul, thy servant kept thy father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear, and I took him out of the lamb, out of, out of the flock. It's how far did it go? Okay. And I went out the, uh, I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. My servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised demon, I mean, Phyllis died, shall be as one of them, seeing he have defiled the armies of the living God. Time out for being afraid of your enemies. Holy Ghost, watch that. You know when you're in the right place. When you start seeing giants. Can I help somebody? Where were the giants at? Now, this is David's giant. But the only other giants you really see in the Bible is the giants that were in the promised land. So I know I'm in the right place when I start seeing giants. I know I'm in the right place. It don't, matter, it, don't make, it don't make no difference where I get to. I'm still going to have to fight. So you think this because you meet a certain place or get to a certain level, you ain't got to fight no more. Wrong answer. You don't have to fight until you get out of here. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that spirit of fear has got to go. It's got to go. David understood that he wasn't going in on his own might. He was going in the power of the Lord. Come on. Uh, 1 Samuel, Samuel 17, 45. David said, you come at me with a sword and a spirit, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. We got to learn how to use the name. We got to learn how to use the weapons that God made available to us. Amen. Prayer, fasting, the word of God. Praying in the spirit. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't pray in the spirit without it. Amen. It's a pre precious cargo. Amen. Amen. And then when you got the spirit of God in you, whether you got the baptism or not, the spirit of God still live in you. Now, you know that, don't you? You got to be careful what you're carrying. Oh, Lord. No amen to that? He don't go in whole houses, liquor houses, and crack houses. Yeah, he don't go. He don't go in them places. But Lord sent me in the bar. No, he didn't. Mm -mm, he don't sent you in no bar. You went to the bar. He just took him in there. He'll wait till you come. He got enough intelligence to know that they can't stay. There. The person that you wait on ain't gonna stand there forever. It's <laughs> a lot of stuff we just do. It sound like God. I had to go in. I had to go in that crack house, and they were calling me. No, the crack was calling me. You got to be delivered. There was a connection. It was, oh Lord, let me quit. Listen. So one of the things that we might realize is all of the side. Here, please, please, if you don't hear nothing else out, out of this, hear this. You know, you know, the people come up to you, now. Hear this, please hear this. Listen to this. Say now, one of the things that we must realize is that all of the disciples had the same opportunity that Peter had. Oh, it's quiet now. You listen, do ain't you? So Peter was the one that accepted the challenge. Jesus just said. Come. <laughs> and that indicated, watch this, that indicates that the command was for everybody that heard it. Ain't that amazing? But Peter, now they talked about Peter now. Oh, big mouth Peter, he always the one to talk. But he's the only one that preached a sermon that brought 3,000 souls to Christ. He cussed, he cut. I don't recommend you keep doing that. If you've done that, you need to be delivered. Cussing he cut, but he got converted. Because you know, uh, uh Jesus told, told, see, it's amazing now. When the enemy see the call on your life, he'll target you. And then Jesus tell Peter, Satan desires to sift you. Not them others, just you. You ever had a direct threat from the enemy? I'm coming to get you. Huh? What did you do? Like Elijah? <laughs> Run and find a king. <laughs> Because I'm going to tell you, after your greatest victory, man, be your greatest uh, uh, attempt from the enemy. Yeah. He's going to, the temptation is not sin. It's just what you do after the temptation come. Huh? Somebody pass you the cigarette, you ain't got to smoke it. I'm going to keep looking like this. So I don't look at you. <laughs> so it's so important because Jesus spoke a, look, it's so important, watch this now. Jesus spoke to a dead person. He had to call them by name because if he hadn't called them by name, Everybody in the tomb would have came forth. So he said, Lazarus, come forth. But in his command in Matthew 14, he calls all of us. And then he meets it again in Matthew chapter 11. Come unto me. And we still ain't. Came. We came halfway. But God ain't want no half-baked saints. You want a half-baked cake? You want to bite in the chicken and, it, and it's running, you know, yeah, I ain't got that. I don't want to say it. Chicken look good on the outside, but it ain't done on the inside. So when we stand before God, but here's the thing. When you stand before God, you want to stand before God empty. You want to stand before God with your assignment completed. So he'll say, well done, not well done. Well done, not good and faithful servant. Enter to the joy of the Lord. Watch this. If you don't have it completed, he'll say, well done. Go to. See? It just is what it is. It ain't no two places we're going to go. Now, ain't no purgatory. I was listening to a teaching on the radio. Somebody was saying something about and John Calvin. No, John, no. Martin Luther is the one that came up again. That's when he nailed that thesis to the Catholic Church. They were saying, come bring an offering. And when you bring an offering, it is needed to take the soul of your loved one out of purgatory to the place they should have went. 
And John uh, Luther, and then then Martin Luther came with the thesis and nailed ninety five pages to the wall of the Catholic Church. So that stuff y'all teaching is erroneous. It's erroneous. You got to watch some of this stuff. If it don't set well with your spirit, you better watch it. We don't operate. God called me another day. We do not operate out of a third eye. We don't operate out of our mind's eye. No spiritual eye. We got spiritual eyes. We operate from the spirit of the Holy Ghost. My mind's eye. You in witchcraft. Now you in the wrong. You in the wrong realm. I heard people saying the guy called me said, "Man, what you think about?" It? I said, "It's witchcraft." I said, "You might well read my palm while you're at it." All of it go together. So all of in the same room is demonic. Man, we are led. The Bible said, "They that are led of the Spirit of God, they are the sons." Of God, I ain't got the. He said the third eye is right here. Really? So that means you coming out of the the mind, the will, and the emotions. You coming out of the seat of your emotions. You coming out of the soul realm. And the soul realm ain't it ain't certain, boy. Our soul will do anything. You know you will. I see you looking at me. You know, given the opportunity, you might do anything. Amen. <laughs> you know you better than me now. Okay. So yeah, he started talking about that. I said, no, man, we don't, I don't operate like that. So watch this now. So let's get back over in 1 Samuel chapter 30. David's brothers, now they had the same opportunity. But they were afraid and they ran, according to 1 Samuel uh, 17, 24. They ran. They ran from him. They ran from him. Who is this? He was throwing out threats. Come on, come to me. I'll eat you up. And the Bible said he, he called David. David shows up and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this man? He says, as a matter of fact, he said, uh, I'll accept the challenge and what shall the man get that slew this giant? Scared of giants? We should be giant slayers. Yeah. There's some things in your life that you didn't deal with when they were small. Mm, they're still waiting. But now they ain't the same size. That attitude that you never got delivered from is full grown now. You wonder why when somebody asks you to do something, you always rebel. Oh, God. We got to be delivered. We can't just come to Christ, man, and not get delivered. All of us, even me holding this, we got to get delivered. We can't stay the way we were. We were full of the devil. Just me, right? I mean, think about it now. Can I give you the illustration? I keep giving. If I had a storage shed, let's say the storage shed was as big as this room right here. Big as the pulpit area. Now, let's say over the course of 20 years, you pack a lot of stuff in this in this shed. Do you know what's in the shed? Not unless you took an inventory. Huh? So let's say now you're this shed. You get saved at 20 years old. How much stuff packed in you? 20 years of stuff. And you think after two years, you're going to grab the microphone. Come on. Glory, y'all. Come on. Let's praise him. Really? Huh? Really? No, you need to sit down for. Yeah. Come on now. I mean, we got to go through a process, sanctification. And then, then the Bible said, now after we after we sanctify ourselves, it said, then the God, very God of peace, sanctify you holy. So then he got to put his stamp of approval on us before he do anything else. Because if I ask you how you doing, you're gonna say fine. But if I ask the Lord how you doing, <laughs> might be a different story, right? Are y'all with me? So David's brothers had the same opportunity, but they were scared. Now, that's some siblings you guys or some, or some people you hung out with. They had the same opportunity you had. You took the challenge and they didn't. Amen. The easiest thing to do is to go back. The easiest thing to do is give up. It don't take nothing to give up. You can die anytime you want to. All you got to do is stop eating. Three days will be at your funeral. Three days. It don't make no difference who preaches. It ain't going to do you no good. Three days. <laughs> All right. Well, watch this. So, so it's time for us to come out of that comfort zone and, and it's time to go to work. Jesus makes a, he makes a, a declaration to the disciples over in John chapter 9 verse 4. He says, I've come to work, do the works of the work. I came to work the works of him that sent me while it's day. He said, the night coming that no man can work. So while you got blood running warm in your veins, you can hear him well. You better do what he called you to do. Can't nobody do no work from the grave. Can't do no work from the grave. Because you're going to have to explain 
from the day you were born to the day you left, that dash in between. You're going to have to explain all of that. You'll be standing there before God and you're going to say, what happened there? Be no lies, no excuses there. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he keeps perfect record. Yeah. He don't never make no mistakes. He said, what, what, what? Lord, you don't understand. I, I was tired that morning. Say, I was too when I carried that cross, but I still didn't stop. And then you will. Oh, okay, Lord. He might say, I say, he might say, stage right. <laughs> Depart from me. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. So you gotta make so we gotta make up our mind while you know while we're in our right mind. Make up your mind. You know what I'm saying? Don't wait till you get on your bed and you don't know where you at. Child, you can't make no decisions then. You know, it happens to some people, not all. Because they got you know got people that make wills. So if they, you know, something happens to them medically, then people can make decisions for them. Don't find yourself in that predicament. If you ain't made the right decision to choose Christ. Amen. Because when it's over, most time it's over. Hebrews 11 and 6. So this thing that Peter does, you know, it wasn't by the natural. Hebrews 11 and 6. I, I, I got it. For without faith, it's impossible to please him. Got to have that faith, right? You know, in this kingdom, it's, it's only operating by, we, we operate by what? By what? Just faith alone. Come on, God don't move until, until our faith start moving. Yeah. You can pray all day long with all them eloquent words and no faith in God will sit right there. He will. I say Hebrews 11, 6. Yeah, he, I'm telling you, man. The only thing that moves the heart of God is faith. Look at 6, 11 and 6. But without faith. It is impossible to please them. For he that come, oh no, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that what? Seek him with their whole heart. Diligently. You know, God, you, you can't never fool God. Can't never fool God. And, 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 and those people that you're following in ministry, when they're in tune with God, you can't fool them. In most cases, you can't because when then you're in tune with the Holy Ghost, they can be standing right at the altar praying for them. He said, they lying. I've seen them stand flat foot right here. Pastor, I'll be coming every Sunday. You'll see a lot of things on the hunks of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but when the rubber beat the road, boy, it's a different story. It's easy to say what you're going to do, man. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this man. Tired of this woman. Then the next week, hey baby. <laughs> Say, I won't go talk to you. How you doing? Anyway. So everything. <laughs> so in this season. <laughs> I mean, that's right where we are. Come on. This is the reality part of it. Man, it's hard to say. It's easy to say no, but when it's time to do it, man, it's a different story. Yeah. So in this season right here, look, there's, there's a season right here that everything that we receive must be done by faith. Peter stepped out of that boat by faith. As long as he was operating in faith, he continued to walk. But the moment he was distracted, his faith was zapped. He didn't sink, y'all. Ah! Somebody said he sunk. He didn't sink. The Bible said he began to sink. So the moment you start operating in flesh instead of faith, You'll start going down. You'll start going down. You see the thing about it is we know when we're not operating in faith. We know it. You know it. Do you know you? Better than I know you. Oh, so because of the winds, he began to he began to go down because his faith was weak. And sometimes your faith will become weak. But guess how you strengthen your faith. Oh, Lord have mercy. Thank you, sir. Romans 10, 17. So faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. That Hebrew word for uh, hear, oh, Lord have mercy, is obey. So faith cometh by obeying. Obeying the word of God. That's how your faith is strengthened. Huh? Come by obeying. Because the thing about it, when you start obeying the word of God, when you ask God for stuff, 
He don't take a long time. He don't take no two and three. I mean, come on now. When Daniel prayed, the Bible said, you know, it took 21 days. We know that. But then Satan held it up. But the answer still got there. But it ain't always got to take 21 days. You ain't got to stay in the wilderness for 40 years. The Bible did say it was an 11-day journey. Huh? And we know 40 is the number of tests. I know you're deep. I know. I know you're deep. Jesus only stayed 40 days. So something was operating, right? So we got to operate in faith. If God is calling you out to something. He's just saying, come out on the th- because the per- the call is personal. What he called you to do is personal. You know when he called, you know how he told you to do it. Just do it the way he told you to do it. Don't let nobody call you to deviate from the way he told you to do it. If he told you to do it this time and do it at that time, you do it at this time right here, he's going to be there. If he tell you to start, oh Lord, you convicted me. If he tell you to start service at 11 o'clock. Start at 11 o'clock. <laughs> that way you're obligated. Because God ain't, only thing God obligated to is order. Order. It is so simple that if you walk up to a drink machine and you see an out of order sign, you don't put your money in it. So when God see you out of order, he look, oh, keep it moving. There goes hand. <laughs> I mean, come on, let's keep it on the personal level. When we're out of order, God folds his arms. He would be a partaker of sin if he moved for us out of order. God, you know he ain't been to church in a month. Please move, Lord. He gonna move out the way. <laughs> Y'all like this kind of preaching? <laughs> so the thing about it is when Peter started to go down, he said, oh, Lord, save me. What did Jesus do? He reached down and he pulls him up. And then he tell them, you got a little faith. But I found out that's all it takes. The, the, the grain of a mustard seed. Some of us want to exit. The Bible says in uh, Romans chapter in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, he gave every man the measure of faith. We got what we need. But we keep making excuses for why we don't do what he called us to do. I know you don't like messages like this. Probably don't. But it's okay. If you don't like them, you know, uh, it's all right. You're going to hear it sooner or later. He ain't always talking about houses, cars, and all that other stuff that we like to hear. The Bible said in the last days they'll have itching ears. He said they'd rather believe a lie before they believe the truth. Yeah, they'll run from place to place trying to hear something. And you know what? You know what? When the enemy see you unstable, oh, Lord have mercy. The Bible said in James 1 8, uh, uh, no, no, no. He said, a double minded man. Is unstable in all of his ways. All of them. He said that man need not ask the Lord for nothing. You going to do it today. Tomorrow you're not going to do it. Do it today. Tomorrow you're not. Two souls. Two minds. Double minded. Split down the middle. Ain't nothing wrong being undecided now. And you're praying about it. But not doing nothing. You ain't affected. You ain't, you ain't been affected on nobody. Your salt done lost all of its safer. Your anointing done lost all of its power. You know, there's two anointings out there. There's an anointing with there's an anointing that's a pure, holy, you know, this is clear. But then there's an anointing out there with flies in it. You do know that, don't you? It is. You know, for everything God got original, you understand that better, don't you? The Lord have a copy. God got true apostles. Uh, you're getting it now. The light came. Ooh, the light burning so bright. He got false apostles. I mean, for I me, mean, a false prophet. God got true apostles. They're false. The devil, false apostles. They're in the Bible, man. They're in the earth now. And why do we? Why do we find ourselves following this stuff? Because we're unstable. We're not praying enough. We're not consuming enough of this word. If you consume enough of this word, God will begin to show you folks for real. Man, let me take, can I tell you something about the, about the Holy Ghost? He'll never give you false information. He'll never give you a revelation that didn't come from God. The real Holy Ghost. The revelation he gives you, it's going to blow your mind before you blow theirs. Hello. And the thing about revelation, 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. If God gave it to me over here, he done gave it to somebody else. It might be across the world. But the Bible said our spirits got to bear witness that we are the children of God. So there's some people that my spirit don't bear witness with. I just don't say nothing. I just back up. Amen. If I go on a service and you're prophesying and it's not God, I'm going to lock eyes with you because I got him in here. I lock eyes with you and say, you better not come this way. Don't touch nothing on this road. And them jokers, they'll walk down the aisle. They'll walk. They'll walk. He'll look at me, but he'll say, can't touch that. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to know who you are. Don't let people tell you who you are. Let God tell you who you are, and then let people confirm it. That's the thing. That, see, it's, it's a dangerous thing to prophesy to people too early. You'll cause them, you'll cause a joke to run out in front of a Mack truck. You will, man. They'll start running. Apostle. <laughs> And he ain't got saved yet. Okay. All right. In this season, we got to strengthen our faith, and it comes back to come through the word of God. We all got the faith that we need now. I'm gonna move this last point right here. The thing about it is, and stuff gonna come against you. Psalms 39 19 said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. You're gonna have some stuff come against you. Stuff can touch your body. It don't matter. Because the enemy brings sick. He brings all kinds of stuff. He'll bring the kitchen sink and throw it at you. But you got to understand that when you're walking, on, walking in that spirit, hey man, look, stay focused on him. Just stay focused on him. Stop listening to those accusations. That's the wind blowing. Hello? I got folk texting me. I text me talking about, I need to talk to you. For what? Talk to me about what? Why well, you can't just call me? I can talk better. I, I can't text fast. <laughs> and then I sent me about four or five more. I get I get in my flesh quick in that area. I see my phone messed up. I can't talk text no more. Then when you talk text, it come out. It ain't right. When you, <laughs> you better check it. Man, somebody talk text me. Oh, I talk text. It cussed me out, man. It came out just professor. Man, what in the world? They said, oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't mean it. You better check that. They, they, they didn't check it. <laughs> I think they meant to do it. I, I could be wrong. Boy, I got offended. <laughs> All right. So we got to, uh, I can talk better. We got to, let me tell you something. We got to stay focused because stuff going to come against you. And then here, here's the form that it comes. It comes through flesh. It comes through flesh. David said, now, he says, it wouldn't have bothered me if it came from the outside of the church. But David said, man, you set that sweet counsel together and you kicked up your heels against me. Come on, I helped you out. And you talked about me. Now, it, now it takes a whole lot of God to keep you calm on that area. Now. I'm just talking about me. Huh? You, know what I mean? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because I mean, I mean, some stuff you didn't, you didn't think was going I'm like, really, man? You? Oh, damn, mercy. Come on now. And I ain't talking about, about all the money I gave you or, or how much money I put in. I ain't talking about that stuff. I'm talking about that me and you, we went prayer meetings together. And we ain't talking about no running the streets together, but some of the people we ran with in the streets, we need to cut them jokes off after we come in the kingdom. Yeah, come on now. Because if you hang out with them people that you were hanging out before you came in the kingdom, either one or two things going to happen. Yeah, you're going to draw them or they're going to draw you. And in most cases, oh Lord, I said, I won't smoke no more. There you go. Two of them in your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so if we stay focused while we're on this journey, that kind of stuff don't catch us off guard. You got to put those blinders. That's why they put the blinders on the horse. So he stay focused. You got to put on blinders sometimes. I know some stuff going on around you. But everybody can see in their peripheral. You can see everything going on on the side of you. But don't focus on that. Come on. It's always going to be there. Yeah. As Jesus told the disciples, there's some things and people you always going to have with you. He said, but stay focused. He said, if they hate you, no problem. It's because of me. That's what he said. It man, this thing ain't about us. And you ask the question, well, if it ain't about me, then why I'm going through it? Because he wants to use you. That's why. 
people don't like you. You, you ever walked into a room and the atmosphere shifted? And they said, oh, there they go. Just all you got to do is just walk in and just smile. You want to come out with all the scriptures. <laughs> you want to bring the religious demon out. But the Bible said they tried to eat lunch. <laughs> so this affliction part, affliction is the part of the Christian walk. Just because you may be going through right now don't mean that anything wrong has happened in your life. Stuff shows up sometimes. You don't have to do anything wrong. It just shows up sometimes. But watch this. Don't look at it negative. You got to understand that God knows what to send to strengthen us. If we say he, if we, if, if we say we per, uh, serve a perfect God, then the, he'll never make no mistakes. Learn how to accept what God allows. Learn how. I got to say that again. Learn how to accept what he allows. If he allowed it, it's for a purpose. It's for a purpose. We don't always understand it. But it's a purpose behind it. Yeah. There's some things in your life you ain't never going to get rid of. So then God will move it. God will allow something to take it out of the way. Yeah, he will. And then you got to learn how to accept what he allows. All these questions. Ain't nothing wrong with questioning God now. I ain't saying that, but you're going to waste a lot of time questioning God when he's perfect. Hmm? Go out lose the house. Got a job? <laughs> you know, we get ourselves in trouble, man. Go out and get a $50,000 car and you ain't working nowhere. Is that a red flag? Red, white, and blue. Yeah, you're on your way to the penitentiary. They're watching you then. Man, I'll, let me tell you something about the government. They are smart people. They've done their research on people years ago. Yeah, the drug dealer's going to be in trouble when they take that cash out of circulation. The drug dealer's going to be in trouble, man. A whole lot of us going to be in trouble, too. Oh, I, I better not go there. See, I got to stay with the Holy Ghost. Let me move. <laughs> Watch this. So God just may have you in the furnace putting the finishing touches on. <laughs> it get hot sometimes in situations that you've been in for a long time. God, how long am I going to stay here until I finish? The Hebrew boys in Daniel chapter 3, they were confident. And now sometimes, now, now if you jump in the fire on your own, then you own your own. But if God allowed the furnace, you'd be put in the furnace. He's going to take care of you. As a matter of fact, he's going to be in there with you. And you read Daniel chapter 3. It ain't, it ain't been said nowhere else, but, but that, fourth, that fourth one in the fire was Jesus. Here's the thing. He never came out. Those three came out. And when God bring you out this time, if you go through the right way, you won't even smell like what you've been through. You'll be wiser, smarter, better. Because, you know, those, those situations come to purge out of me what I don't need in my life. Bad attitude, rebellion, idolatry. All the things that's in this flesh, man. This flesh is dangerous. You think you're any better than Paul? If you go over to Romans chapter 7, Paul said, man, the thing I didn't want to do. The thing I found myself doing. Huh? He said, every time I try to do good, evil is present. Paul said, I don't want to do it. Then over in 2 Corinthians 12, he said, I had a thorn in my flesh. Then the Bible said it was a messenger from Satan. It was an angel. They had to buffet me. So there's some things God ain't going to move. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. So if Paul talking like this, you think God going to bring you out and let you sit down and be comfortable? You sitting out in your king's chair and people fanning you? Fan you in the hell? <laughs> Come on, God wants us up doing something. Come on. The Bible said, I think it's John chapter, four, John chapter 12, the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violence taketh by force. So the enemy, he's snatching souls, man. We got to get out. I'm telling you, we got to get out there in them streets, man. This ain't the ministry right here. The thing is, he says, go ye therefore 
and make disciples. When, when people come here, don't come talking about no car, cars and houses. Get me ready to fight the devil. Because I get out in that street, if I ain't ready, he going to strip me naked. He going to strip me naked, man. And then the most part, folks say they saved. I've been saved for 20 years, and you can't even lead nobody to Christ. And I think that's something. Or you get out in the street, and then somebody slam a door in your face, and you're ready to run. Excuse me, I got the sneeze. You get out there and you witness the one for one person. Or somebody slam one door in your face. God, they don't love me. They hung him on the cross. <laughs> they hung him on the cross. Ain't nobody crucifying you. You need. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hold him back here. Some stuff in my life need to be crucified. But then we come into this place right here. We're supposed to empower people. Educate them. Show them what, you know, they know what God called them to do. Empower them with the word of God. Tell them God is not pleased with a life of sin. Come on, man. Sin is a reproach. Yeah, God calling somebody today out of sin. He said, come out of sin. You didn't think you're going to get by, did you? Huh? Yeah, come on, man. Come into this place every Sunday and never make a decision. Going to any place, never making a decision. That's ludicrous. That's insane. Now, I had enough sense to know if I go stop going to church, I'll probably get my life to the Lord. So I ain't going. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, really? So when you didn't want to change, you stay away from them real saints, boy. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with them old mothers. Them old mothers were sanctified. Most of them were. Now, not all of them. Some of them were good candidates for the lake. <laughs> Come on. But I'm telling you something. But them old mothers, for the most part, when you came to that, now they ain't got no many morning benches like they used to have. Then when you came up there on the morning mention, y'all was tearing for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Was, G -g 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 -g. No, G -g 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 nothing. I had it in. Stay right there till you get it. You get, you get the real. Come on back tomorrow night. Yeah. And they revivals they had. The revivals they last no one day and two days. How can you revive something that been dead for 20 years in a day? In one day? You better come about two weeks. First night, you'll just get to hear. Come in one night, somebody come get this one night revival and get restored. They ain't never tell you to leave your pocketbook home, did they? Man. So, them three Hebrew boys, they didn't bow. We got to stop bowing to the things of this world, they will cause you to lose your focus. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh. Pride of life, all that's in the world, those things that satisfy my old man. Everywhere you go, bling, bling, bling. It fascinates me to see them cars up that high. Like, man, how they get up there? Probably have a ladder in the back seat or something. You know, and you're getting that thing like you're riding a horse. So we got to be careful. So keep. So so my thing is, as long as Peter kept his eyes on what he should have been looking at, his kingdom assignments to come to see the, the the closer we get to him, the more imperfections he showed me. So if I stay focused on him while I'm going, I don't have time for all the other garbage. Come on, because we got a lot of stuff going on in our life that God ain't in, and they are time wasters. We spend more time doing a lot of stuff than we do consuming that word. You think I'm lying? The first, watch this. From the first of the month to the third, watch how the world is moving. That's what it is. Watch how Joe is just sliding and smiling. Putting chips in. See? You understand what I'm saying? And, then, and then sometimes you can slide your car and it don't go through. They'll get a piece of paper. Ah, oh, don't go nowhere. Come here, I got a bag. 
slide and it go right through. They didn't want you to leave with that money. But then we get all focused now. We start going chasing the same thing they chasing. I think I'll get me a new rug. Why do you need a new rug when you got a rug? Ain't that wrong? Rug your child off. I ain't talking about you, Lord. <laughs> I mean, stuff we don't need. But I think I, I just, I just got the feeling. I just need what? <laughs> you got a feeling? It is not about move up. What you feel? Bring that to the kingdom. Let the kingdom use it. Nah. <sighs> okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So the, so, the, so, the, so the Bible talks about the weightier things. We forget about the weightier matters in the kingdom. People start talking about a bunch of money. Get you off course. That, that gospel of prosperity is of the devil. It's of the devil. Because they they've taken the prosperity and put money on it. And it really was so to be prosperous to have good health. To be whole. No sickness. Nothing broke. Everything whole. Nothing lacking. Yeah. They brought came in, 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 Acts, in, uh, in Acts chapter 4, they started bringing stuff and putting it at the feet of the apostles. I ain't talking about for the apostle to have now, but it was the pot for the community. Yeah, so they distributed back into the community when people had a need, but we don't do that no more. You know, for the most part. Now, we help people, we ain't helping everybody. We ain't paying your light bill every month. No, sir, you better go down to social service somewhere. If you exhaust them, you've exhausted us. Oh, excuse me. I mean, really? I done been down. I done been. Well, look, we can't help you. We can't pay our lights over here. Who's going to help us? Can't come to you. Better use some wisdom. Hey, the boy. He said, the poor you should have what you always. You can't help everybody on the corner. Just be that of the spirit. Help somebody now. <laughs> I'm going to give you a word. He hungry. Just buy him a sandwich. That's enough. Buy him a sandwich. Ain't gonna kill you. You got a knot in your pocket. You get a man two dollars. Man, get bread to go in his throat and can't even swallow. When they get the man a combo, I mean, you know, if it was you, what would you want somebody to do for you? You ever thought like that? The golden rule says, "Do unto others as you have them do unto you." Yeah, go in and get him a, a grown man a kids meal. <laughs> you are gonna get a kid, kids meal for this? <laughs> <laughs> your harvest come back and just go look at your bank account. Two fifty. That's two dollars fifty cent. <laughs> Cause the Bible said what a man sold. Yeah. Have you ever thought that the Bible did say when you lend to the poor, you lend to the Lord now? Okay. And God looking at your motive, why you done it? Yeah. I tell you about that. What you give out is gonna come back more. So help somebody. Keep a seed in the ground somewhere. Yeah, you got to sow in order to reap. It's God's law of reciprocity. You know, you help somebody else, somebody gonna help you. It might not be, might be somebody in your family that needs some help. It might help somebody, but you gonna get the help down the road. He said, "Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap." Okay, then it says in the book, I think it's Second Corinthians chapter nine, starting at verse six. He says, uh, "If you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly." Hey, Amen. Ain't always talking about money. You can sow time. You can sell a lot of things inside of money. We don't got caught up on money. Yeah. You can have a little bit of money, but have a lot of faith. And it'll cause people to spend their money on you. I don't know why I'm paying this bill for you. I said, thank you, Lord. Yeah, God, God kept me for a season. Hello. For a season, not for a life. <laughs> Somebody will ride a horse till it's guilty. You know what a guilty horse <laughs> You know what a guilty horse is? <laughs> a guilty horse, you done rode that jumper to his back like that. <laughs> he ain't no more good. He just out in the stable and you just feeding him. <laughs> God, Miss Y'all Space Boy, have me laughing like that. That's how folks are doing you, man. They'll guilt you, I promise you. They'll wear you out. Sometimes you got to say no, sometimes you got to tell people no. I'm hearing your mother. You gotta tell them no. I learned, man. You get your heart in the way, and you're always being lack. I promise you, you can't help. I'm telling you, you can't give to everybody. 
He said, don't, oh, Lord have mercy. Don't give what's holy to the dogs. Don't cast your pearls before swine. You got to know where you're giving your stuff at. If you don't put a seed in good ground, you know the rest, don't you? You know the rest, don't you? Huh? Now, if the Lord tell you to do it, that's a different story. But if you're doing it for to be seen, it's on you. It is. Because, you know, we like to do stuff for people to see. There was a woman that gave a woman a ham. And, boy, every time she got him chest, I want to thank God for helping Sister Sally over there. Sister Sally said, man, I want to get that ham back. <laughs> don't help nobody, man, and publicize it like that. Don't, don't do that. That's embarrassing now. Okay? Because if you embarrass somebody, somebody going to embarrass you. Hey, look, since you got me in the open, I'm going to get you. That's how we do. That's that carnal nature. Now, that's an old man. So, hey, amen. I'm, I'm I'm closing. So, the thing about it is, God is calling us. He's beckoning us to come. Just step out. Yeah, I know. The Bible says in Second Corinthians five seven, the just shall live by faith. So, in this season, God wants you to step out on what you don't see, but what you believe, because He only honors faith. That's all he honors. It pleases him. I know what he called you to do and all that. I know, I know it's hard. It seems hard, but he'll finance it. He'll provide. He told you to do it. He'll give you the sources, the resources, the people and everything. Mm-hmm. He will. Yeah, God didn't call me to pastor church and preaching no benches and, and, and benches and carpet. So if I come over here and I'm the only one here, hey, to my high priest, amen, I ain't amen like nothing. I'm going home. You can do what you I'm going to the house. Hey Amen. I told the church we're going to start back Wednesday night Bible study. If you don't come, I ain't coming either. Well, you know God called me. He called you to be over here. Try to get deep with me. Hey Amen. Come on. You think you think this word I'm preaching, the chair's going to get up and glory. Hallelujah. These chairs right here are doing what God ordained them to do. <laughs> they, are doing, they were ordained to be in ministry. God ordained you to be in ministry. Do what He's calling you to do. Come. Y'all clap your hands. <laughs>